This is our pre-lab lecture for the isolation of caffeine from tea. So we're going to do uh, another extraction this week. So caffeine is an alkaloid molecule, right? An alkaloid, an alkaloid is a plant molecule that is basic. And so you see that nitrogen right there, right? These nitrogens are inside the ring and are part of the aromatic system here and here, right? But this nitrogen here is available and it can be protonated. Let's see if this is working, right? It can be protonated. And so it is this basic fact that makes these things called alkaloids. So caffeine is interesting in that a gram of caffeine is soluble in 46 milliliters of water at room temperature, but a gram is soluble in only 1.5 milliliters of boiling water. So you see why boiling water is so effective at extracting caffeine from tea, leaves, and coffee beans. So we're going to do this, we're going to boil um, our steeping solution in a 250 milliliter um, Pyrex um, Erlenmeyer flask. And so our steeping solution is about, now remember we don't use Erlenmeyer flasks for measurement, but about 90 milliliters of water with calcium carbonate in it. So we're going to add calcium carbonate and we're going to steep it we're going to put our tea bags in a 250 milliliter beaker and we're going to pour our hot solution over the tea bags. We're going to pour a little more than half once. We're going to squeeze the tea bags out, transfer that out into another container, and then pour the remaining solution in so that we steep and squeeze out our tea bags two times. So, as I said before, an alkaloid molecule, and right, it is an alkaloid, so an alkaloid molecule is basic. And so there is an acidic form of our alkaloid molecule. So here you see it's protonated right there. And so the pKa of that is about 10 at 40 degrees Celsius or it's temperature dependent, so at 24 degrees Celsius, it's about 14. Well, when we steep our tea, the pH of tea is about five. Well, since you know, we just did our acid-base chapter, since our pH is lower than our either of our pKa's, that means we have extra hydrogen ions in the solution and that's going to tend to shift our equilibrium toward the protonated form and the protonated form being positive is going to be even more soluble in water but the problem is we want to extract this into a an organic solvent and that positively charged form is not going to be soluble in our, our organic solvent. So one of the things we want to do is shift that equilibrium back the other direction. Right? We want to go back the other way. And so we have to do this in the presence of a base. And so that's why we're going to use the calcium carbonate. Right? So in the presence of the calcium carbonate, our protonated form present in the steeped tea will react with the carbonate ion to make the deprotonated form, which will be soluble in our organic solvent, leaving the bicarbonate ion and the calcium ion. So that's why we need the base is so that we end up with our neutral form of caffeine that we can extract. 
So, because of all of the polar groups, right, we've got, right, this nitrogen polar, this nitrogen polar, two carbonyl groups polar, this nitrogen electronegative polar. There's a lot of polar groups. So even in the neutral molecule, it's going to dissolve best in a moderately polar solvent. So our moderately polar solvents here, um, right, we could use dichloromethane, right? The two chlorines are going to pull electrons that direction, making it polar. Uh, we could use chloroform. The three chlorines are going to also make chloroform polar. The problem is halogenated solvents like that, right? When our solvents are halogenated, right? Halogenated solvents are hard to discard, right? They're, they don't burn well. They create products that you don't want to deal with. So instead of using a halogenated solvent, we're going to use ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate, it's an ester, right? That functional group there is an ester. We have the carbonyl, right? That's the carbonyl group bound to an oxygen. And so we can make esters by linking a carboxylic acid with an alcohol. And even though they're not good for you, they're less toxic than some other solvents because if your liver breaks it up, in this case, it's going to break it up into acetic acid, where we get the acetate, and ethyl alcohol, ethanol. And so it is a less toxic solvent than some other choices we might use. And it's easier to discard because it's not halogenated like our other polar um, organic solvent choices. Okay? So after we've steeped our material, right, we're going to pour it through and use a vacuum filtration apparatus. The funnel for this is called a Buchner funnel. B-U-C-H-N-E-R. So that's your Buchner funnel. Right? So the Buchner funnel is fitted to the flask with, um, by putting it through um, an adapter that makes a, a, a seal, and then you have a vacuum hose. And in our case, we hook our vacuum hose to an aspirator. So this is, this is the sink, right? So water... Right? Water comes through, and as it flows past the opening, like that, it uses Bernoulli's principle. B -E -R -N -O -U -L -I. Bernoulli's principle says that a moving fluid is lower pressure than a stationary fluid. So the moving water, and we want this to be cold water, the moving water creates low pressure in this area, which then draws in the air, right? That creates a low pressure area. And since our hose is connected, it pulls a vacuum. And the limit of the vacuum, theoretically, is the vapor pressure of the water. And so that's why we want cold water, because the cold water has a lower vapor pressure and so we can create a better vacuum. Now, when you're running a vacuum filtration with an aspirator, right? This thing is called the aspirator. Right? A water aspirator. The problem is you run a vacuum and the vacuum is only created as long as the water is moving. If the water stops moving, then you would have atmospheric pressure pushing in all directions including back up through and into the lower pressure system inside your sealed flask and so you don't want that so whenever you're working with an aspirator when you're done filtering right after you've drawn all of your all of your material through 
right, after you've drawn your material through, you break the vacuum by removing the hose before you turn off the water. And that's important. Right? Otherwise, water gets sucked back into your flask and contaminates whatever's there. And sometimes when we're doing this, right, right now, and, and this is a case, right? Right now, it's this. We're trying to collect that filtrate. That liquid is what we want to collect. And we don't want it contaminated with water from the tap. So you have to remember, remove the hose before you turn off the water every time. Okay, now, once we've collected that aqueous phase, we're going to do two things. We're going to, or we're going to, we're going to add salt to it, and then we're also going to allow it to cool to room temperature. Okay, remember the cooling. Caffeine is more soluble in hot water than it is in cold water, right? And so allowing it to cool reduces the solubility, so it makes our caffeine more likely to move from the aqueous phase into the organic phase. That would be a Q. So we have to move from the aqueous phase to the organic phase. All right, so that's one part. So adding salt does something else. Adding salt makes water interact with the ions. Well, remember, solubility is dependent on the solute, in this case water, I'm sorry, the solvent, in this case water, interacting with the solute, in this case, the caffeine. Well, if we can get water interacting strongly with the ions in the salt, the sodium chloride, then water is less able to interact with the caffeine, again, making caffeine more likely to leave the water and go into the organic phase because water is interacting less strongly with it. Adding salt also makes the whole aqueous phase act like brine that we used to dry our aqueous phase last week. So reducing, uh, that pulls water out of the organic phase and makes drying that organic phase easier. As I close my parentheses there. So, Adding the salt at this stage does those two things. It makes it more likely that the caffeine will leave the aqueous phase and go into the organic phase. And it also acts like brine, reducing the amount of water that will stay in the organic phase. So, we're going to separate those phases. We're going to extract this with our ethyl acetate. Our ethyl acetate should be the top layer. Our aqueous phase should be the bottom layer. We've used the separatory funnel before. Remember, invert it gently. In this case, we have to be careful because caffeine along with ethyl acetate in water can form what's called an emulsion. That is, it can mix with water and form little droplets that don't coalesce back so that the phases separate. And that can happen if you shake it too vigorously. So at this stage, we need to be gentle in our mixing of the two phases. Remember our slow rock to get the mixing. So we need to be gentle and then we need to burp our separatory funnel like a baby, and then run out our lower layer, which should be the water, and we want to keep the upper layer, which should be the organic ethyl acetate layer. Okay? 
We're going to dry with anhydrous magnesium sulfate again. So this is something we've done before. That shouldn't be a surprise. Remember, we keep adding it slowly until the material flows. Like fine snow when the um, flask is swirled. That shows that water has been absorbed, right? So in these, water is being absorbed. It clumps when water is being absorbed. When it stops clumping and flows like snow, that's when your layer is dry. Okay? Now, the lab procedure says to set up a simple distillation apparatus to remove the um, solvent. Um, that certainly works, and it works very well. Again, you're going to use a water-cooled condenser, so water in there, water out there. Make sure you clamp together and clamp solidly your simple distillation apparatus. It is possible that Mr. Wyeth or Dr. Stickney um, might change that. Be prepared if they ask you to do it by um, the rotovap. Right. Be compare. Be prepared in case they decide that using the rotovap would be more efficient this week. At the end, you will either distill or uh, rotovap down to a small volume of say five to ten milliliters. And then uh, you will gently evaporate that on a low hot plate to recover your caffeine. So then you're going to weigh that and report your yield. So. That should give you an introduction to the lab we're going to do this week. Um, I hope we can uh, work efficiently. This lab is a little less complex than the one we did last week. So after doing last week's lab, this one should be very straightforward. Please let us know if you have any questions.